Let's talk a little bit about precedence. We've talked about precedence before, or you've heard it in your um, school as order of operations. And I have here a simple expression, 7 times 2 plus 5 times 6. The order of operations is multiply is higher than addition. So the thing we should do first is multiply, multiply, and then add. Okay, but uh, I was having some fun with my son last night, confusing him horribly because this is kind of a new concept to him. Let me show you what I did. I, I brought up these two calculators like so and you see one is in scientific mode one is in standard mode and I asked him hey type in this expression into both of them type it in at the same time so we push the buttons like for example we got well let me get this back up sorry uh, one calculator two calculator so the first number we push is seven in both calculators and then we said multiply on both calculators. And you can see both calculators so far agree with what's going on here. Then we punch a 2 and a 2, and so far so good. And then plus, plus, this one changes to a 14, plus, this changes to a 14. 5, 5, and then we have times. So here, where's the times? Times. And the times, and oh, notice this calculator says 19. All right, now hopefully this is old hat, but it doesn't hurt to review. Uh, this calculator doesn't consider order of operations. All right, it, it it's greedy. It takes up the operations and gobbles up the results as we go along as fast as possible. So seven times two plus five is 19, and now we are going to multiply 19 to six. Whereas the scientific calculator is a little smarter. It says 7 times 2. Okay, well, that's 14. Uh, plus 5 times. Well, I need to know what I'm multiplying 5 by, and then I'll add that to 14. Okay, so let's punch 6 here and 6 here. And then equal, equal, and voila. 44 and 14. Now, when I asked my son what's 7 times 2 plus 5 times 6, he said 44. He got it correct. That was good. But then I had him punch it into this calculator here in standard mode, and it came out as 114, and he was thoroughly confused and frustrated because he's assumed that the calculator was right. How could a calculator be wrong? Well, <laughs> this calculator is correct in the context it's made to understand. Okay, click view. I'm in standard mode here. And then over here, this one is in scientific mode, and it's a little smarter. It understands the order of operations. Well, as programmers, we need to worry about our, that ourselves as we're writing our programs. If, if we're using a higher level language like C++, Java, those kind of things, those languages are smart enough to consider the order of precedence for us. We don't need to necessarily stress it too much unless we're trying to do something interesting. Maybe we want to do 7 times 2 plus 5 and then multiply that result times 6. Well, in a higher level language, we would have to add parentheses here to force precedence, okay? But we're not doing higher level languages here, we're doing assemblies, so basically whatever we tell the CPU to do first, it will do. So we have to think ahead and say, well, seven times two, and then five plus six, and then add it. Now, you may be thinking, Jamie, this is, yeah, I got this, all right? Oh, why are you talking about this? Well, there's a concept in computer science that I think most computer scientists brushed by, but we don't really, um, I don't know, spend a lot of time on it. And it's actually pretty critical when it comes to an expression. First of all, an expression returns in place of its itself a value. Okay, key concept number one. All right, so if I give you this here, how many expressions are here? Pause the video, think about it, and then come back. Okay, I hope you figured out how many expressions are sitting in this. Well, first of all, this is an expression. Now, I just told you an expression returns in place of itself a value. Well, 7 is expression. If I say 7, what does it return? Well, it returns the value of 7. Okay, and then if I say 2, well, 2 is an expression. It returns in place of itself a value, which is 2. And then we have the multiply. Well, the multiply will take its left argument and its right argument, the return values from 
the left expression and the return value from the right expression and return in place of itself a value. In this case, it will return 14. Okay, so that is an expression. The multiply is an expression. All right, well, pause the video and think, well, how many expressions are there really? Now, maybe you got the right answer, but chances are you didn't. Well, tell me, how many more expressions are there in this statement? Okay, well, let's keep going. The next expression to evaluate without the parentheses forcing the plus to go first, um, the next expression to evaluate is actually not the multiply. It's the 5. 5 must return in place of itself a value, which is the value of 5. Okay, it's one thing for me to hand you a literal and say, here's this symbol that, that we call 5. It's another thing for me to hand you a $5 bill. Right? <laughs> now, hopefully that makes sense. I'm returning in place of itself a value. All right? It'd be interesting. There are some languages where you can change 5 to return 100. Well, that, that doesn't make sense, but some languages allow it. I don't know why that would be a useful feature, but whatever. Uh, 6. Okay, 6 is a, an expression. Returns the value of 6. And then we multiply that. All right? And 5 times 6 is 30. So there's another expression. Okay, well, look at this. We have the plus sign, and it has a left operand and a right operand. All right, and 14 plus 30, well, that's an expression there. So, 44. So, the plus sign, plus symbol, it makes another expression. All right, well, in computer science, we like, you see how I've kind of circled these things? We actually like to build these things into trees. All right, and what's a tree? Well, hopefully, if you go, go outside, you can see a tree and it has branches and things branch around it and in computer science we like trees but we draw them upside down so let me show you an expression tree first of all in the expression tree we put the thing that will happen last at the root of the tree all right which again where we draw our trees upside down so that means the root will go at the top but what's the last thing to evaluate in this expression all right well i just evaluated it for you and what was the last thing that i did it was the plus sign. So the plus sign goes here at the root of the tree. All right? And the plus sign is a binary operator in this case. So it has two, that's what by means, two uh, child nodes. Okay, and what's on the left and what's on the right? Well, if you remember, I added the result of 7 times 2 and the result of 5 times 6. So the left side is this multiplication symbol here, which I will draw like so. And the right side is this multiplication symbol right here. So there we go. Well, look at these. These are binary operators, are they not? So each of them should have two nodes hanging off of them as well. So here we go. Here's one. And here's another. And here's one and another. Well, what's going to go into these nodes? Well... This binary operator, which we drew right here, it has two operands, right? And they're both expressions as well. This is sevens on the left, so I'll draw the seven right here. And two is on the right, so we will draw the two right here. And then the multiply here, well, it has a left of five, like so, and a right of two, or not two, six. Okay, now, what's really neat about these expression trees is in order to evaluate... Uh, their result, all we have to do is collapse them. Well, how do we collapse them? Well, we just evaluate them. So 7 times 2 is 14. All right, so that's going to return, let me erase this here, 7 times 2 returns in place of itself a value, which is 14. Okay, and then 5 times 6, well, that gives us 30, all right, so let me let me get rid of this here. Get rid of this here. And that is 30. All right, well, then we just keep going. We need to collapse the rest of this this expression tree. So we have the plus. We have a left, a left of 14 and a right of 30. So 14 plus 30 is 44, right? So this will turn into 44. Like so, and then there you go. That's the result of the entire expression is 44. All right, well, good and dandy. Let me uh, bring these calculators back up. It's 44 if your calculator is smart enough to understand the 
order of operations or precedence, as we call it in programming. But this calculator, it, it used an expression tree to evaluate its result. It just wasn't as smart as far as the order of precedence go, but it still uh, evaluated an expression tree as we typed it in. Can you think of what that expression tree looked like? Uh, pause the video and draw it out on paper. That would be very useful for you. Okay, don't get lazy. I said draw it out on paper. Pause the video. Draw it out. Okay, well, let me see if I can help you here. I'm going to minimize that and uh, minimize that for now. Remember, the uh, there's a key concept I told you, and, and that is the root of the tree is the thing to evaluate first. Remember, we had the plus sign up here and the multiply is down here, and we started at the bottom and we worked our way up, and the last thing to evaluate was the plus sign, okay, because the plus sign was at the root of the tree. Well, what's the last thing to evaluate... Uh, if I have 7 plus 2 plus 5 times 6 and I'm the standard calculator, I'm not thinking about order of precedence. What's the last thing to evaluate? Well, it evaluated this multiply last. All right, so now that multiply is at the root of the tree. Well, what's the right operand? The right operand is 6, like so. And then the left operand, you may think is 5, but it's not 5. It's the result of of something plus five. Okay, well, we know the plus, the plus is the thing that happens second, so I'll put the plus sign here, and the plus sign has a right operand, and it has a left operand. Well, what's the right operand? Well, the right operand, hopefully is easy, it's this five here, so I'll put the five there. And the left operand is, oh, look, another operator, it's the multiply. Okay, because the multiply, this multiply is the first thing we did, and then we did the plus, and then we did the multiply. So you can kind of see this multiply here is this multiply here. That'll happen first, because it's lower in the tree. And then eventually we'll get to the plus sign, which happens second. And that's that's not as low as this multiply, but it's still lower than this last multiply. And then the last thing will happen is this multiply, which is up here. What are the two operands for this multiply right here? Let me draw them like so. Uh, let's see, the, the left operand is the 7, the right operand is a 2. Okay, now this tree looks very different than the one we did before. The one we did before was very balanced. We had the plus, and then we had the multiplies down like this. Let me just, here I'll actually take liberty and, and draw it, and not be lazy. I'll draw the other expression tree right here. And then this had two operands hanging off of it which was 7 and 2. And this had two operands hanging off of it, which was 5 and 6. And then, uh, so you can see this one looks much more balanced. Now, ba balance doesn't matter. Uh, the I mean, well, it does matter in some other parts of algorithms, but as far as the expression goes, it depends on what you want. If you want the standard calculator result, well, you're going to evaluate this expression tree, and if you want the scientific result, you'll evaluate this one. Let's let's collapse this tree. We already saw this one collapses to a 44, like so. Let's let's collapse this one. So 7 times 2, all right, 7 times 2, 7 times 2, is 14, 14 like so, and then 14 plus 5 is 19, so that'll collapse down to a 19, like that, and then 19 times 6, 19 times 6 is... 114. Okay, so hopefully that looks familiar. Let me bring up our two calculators again. All right, 114 was the the lazy expression tree, but it's still a expression tree nonetheless. And then the scientific calculator was the uh, correct order of precedence with 44 over there. So, so there you go. Ex introduction 
to expression trees. I think it's important to understand them because really you, you type a lot of mathematical expressions out in, in programming, especially in the high level uh, languages. And the compiler has to build those expression trees in order to evaluate what the results are going to be and which operands and which expressions are going to be um, uh, evaluated first. Okay, I remember when I was in my undergraduate degree, it was they had us write a, pro, a compiler. Okay, one of the things you do as a senior student, you would write a compiler. And we li I, we literally had to parse this text and say, well, I got a seven, then I got an asterisk and a two, and that's going to build this. And then we had to build those expression trees using objects internally, and then we'd we'd evaluate them like so. It's actually quite easy to evaluate a tree once you've built it. So there you go, introduction to expression trees.